Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, May 3rd, 2017. This video is going to be about mostly what's going on with North Korea. I won't be able to have time or the ability to squeeze in anything else as far as the Mideast uh, into this video. Alright, so this first article is this unarmed plane is the deadliest in the U.S. arsenal. And you're probably seeing a lot of these pre-war articles about how big and badass the U.S. military is and and all of their cool, fun toys that they have. And sadly, people will eat this stuff up. They really do. They'll say, yeah, this is so great. We're so badass. Uh, what's the matter with this Kim Jong-il? Why, why is he provoking us? We could just drop a bomb and, and, and erase them from existence, right? They don't understand that the guy's in the country is being provoked. Um, these are the same people they don't understand that their government uh, funds terrorism, and then they, the terrorists blow a bunch of people up, and then uh, they say, well, we got to go kill the terrorists. Well, no, really, all you got to do is stop funding terrorism, and the terrorism will go away. Um, that's what President Assad of Syria and other uh, leaders have said as well. Just stop funding terrorism in the United States, and it'll go away. You don't need to come in here without consent um, and unsolicited help and come in here and start showing how badass you are, start dropping bombs on people, right? On sovereign nations without their permission. To stop funneling uh, weapons to terrorists, stop training them, America, right? Why aircraft carriers are hard to sink? Well, I don't really care. Um, it's just more news out there that I'm going to go through here to show you about uh, how the media is really getting this. They're planting the seeds in Americans' heads. Uh, to get ready for war. The U.S. test fires Boeing's $40 million missile and a message to North Korea. So I'm just, you guys have to be happy that uh, this $40 million intercontinental ballistic missile uh, capable of carrying nuclear warheads uh, is being test fired. Uh, it's just going to really help promote global peace and definitely not further provoke uh, North Korea. Uh, U.S. successfully tests a nuclear gravity bomb. This is from the 15th of April. The, as the world's attention was on the first combat use of the conventional mother of all bombs, that's right, they somehow found ISIS in Pakistan and Afghanistan. Yeah, no shit, guys, really. Uh, like Al-Qaeda, the boogeyman, now it's ISIS, right? They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And so they wanted to show off the mother of all bombs in Afghanistan that... Um, and start to uh, start blowing things up. Uh, now they've successfully field tested the modernized gravity nuclear bomb in Nevada. Uh, how could anyone forget it all? Um, this whole charade was sparked off with Syria with the 50 Tomahawk missiles. Something to note there. I'm delving into that. I'm kind of cool. It's kind of cool that I can squeeze in some of this information. This this uh, this news about the Middle East in here with this video as well. Um, is I think only 39 missiles actually hit um, the Syrian military base, which means that like half of them were blown out of the sky, um, probably due to Russian uh, equipment, uh, anti, you know, missile uh, type stuff on the ground that shot them out, and that kind of ties in with this whole thing with North Korea. Which is, I hear people say, well, oh, well, I just heard on the radio that, uh, you know, they could reach, in, in three years, they're going to be able to reach the shores of the United States. And it's funny because I'd actually thought about that a few days before. I think it was even the day before uh, this person mentioned that. And I'm thinking, you know, okay, let's say this is a legitimate threat. I honestly don't believe that North Korea is a threat to us, even if we were to provoke them until they had no choice but to just lash out. Um, would they actually be able to be a threat to me, at least here in the mid, in the Midwest, and most of the country? No, we're we're not under any threat. They couldn't even get a bomb over here, um, uh, just much like in World War II, uh, whether it was Germany. Oh, the German the Nazis are going to come take out America. They didn't have the resources to do uh, such a thing to carry out such a campaign, and they weren't that stupid either. So they were never really a threat. Kind of like. Um, and with Japan, uh, yeah, they attacked Pearl Harbor. Whoopty freaking do! Uh, suicide mission 
and uh, they could never carry out a long-range campaign against the U.S. homeland uh, and the continental United States. So again, just making it into a bigger threat, much like the Soviet Union. Again, talking about funding terrorism, if the United States didn't fund the Soviet Union as they were just about to be defeated by Germany and funnel uh, billions of dollars into Stalin's regime, uh, they would have just crumbled and there would have been no nuclear threat where uh, uh, many baby boomers remember they had to hide under their desk in case a nuclear bomb was going to go off. Well, it was all good for money. It was all good for the military industrial complex to build, you know, to just make a lot of money for Wall Street. And Wall Street was the ones that funneled all that money, taxpayer money, of course, uh, into, uh, into the Soviet Union. So a little tit-for-tat uh, propaganda going on between Russia and the United States. Very dangerous, um, but they all have to show uh, how big their their manhood is. Russia claims that it can wipe out the U.S. Navy with a single electronic bomb. And so, yeah, here's an article on Iran. The U.S. Navy destroyer uh, fired a flare at an Iranian ship in the Persian Gulf. A warning flare. April 25th. U.S. moves THAAD missile system to South Korea. And then the U.S., after all of this, has the audacity to actually say, Hey, North Korea, we don't want to fight. Why are you trying to start one? Huh? Huh? And knowing what their actions will lead to, uh, triggering this guy to have to be the strong man that he's betraying himself as in North Korea, he's going to go ahead and do what? Oh, they're going to test fire another ballistic missile. They're defying world leaders. Well, who are these world leaders? Uh, they're the same cartel of criminals. That's who these world leaders are. Very moral people um, who start, you know, start wars and stuff like that. Fun, uh, fun terrorism, drug trafficking and stuff like that. So they know that he's going to do that, and they're going to continue to provoke him. And in the minds of stupid Americans who just watch television and don't think for themselves, they'll actually think that this guy is just out of the blue, roll out of bed sometime uh, one of these days this year in 2017, and decide to start a hate fest against the United States. It's just pure coincidence that the evil dictator in Syria just decided to start gassing his own people uh, amidst a, an onslaught of outside terrorists against his country. Right, while he's winning it, let's just start gassing my own people. So that takes place. Let's just start, you know, bombing them too, and um, and other things uh, lighting up as well. It's all just coincidence, right? Uh, next up, Trump says North Korea missile launch disrespected China. So you have to respect the China, right? To be honest, I don't think China really gave a crap. I think it was more of just Donald Trump here, uh, President Trump, making it appear so. They were the uh, real target, but the real target was the United States because North Korea knows that that's the real enemy is the United States, at least for them. U.S. has major conflict with North Korea possible. Again, this it wasn't even really possible before until the United States, as it was in China, Trump was in China talking with the Chinese, shaking hands, glad-handing him, you know, Never mind the whole campaign promises about China this, China that, trade tariffs and stuff. Oh, they were like best old buddies there in, in, in Beijing, whatever, Trump and the and the leader in China. Uh, meanwhile, he was firing off missiles uh, at Syria, uh, which sending signals to China, but also sending uh, signals to North Korea. Uh, but China was uh, basically, they're not really for this escalation. At least they don't appear to be. Uh, but as far as putting that THAAD missile system, uh, China is against it. China lashes out as South, South Korea puts an American anti-missile system in place. So they didn't like that THAAD system. Also in South Korea, uh, South Koreans were protesting over the missile system that their uh, leadership, their government, uh, put into place. So are they a puppet government? Hmm, I don't know. But crazy dictators, right? Uh, as Lindsey Graham was... Uh, uh, calling people the nuts, right? We gotta take out the nuts, the evil, moral people, right? Uh, not go to DC and just start drone bombing them, right? And actually drain the swamp. You have the Filipino leader, the crazy dictator, saying that North Korea's Kim wants to end the world. He basically says that the U.S. needs to calm down. 
He said one misstep would be a catastrophe and Asia would be the first victim of a nuclear war. So, you know, looking out for his self-interest. Yeah, I guess you can say that. But like I mentioned earlier, these people are seriously concerned uh, because of what they're, you know, what they're seeing. He said the U.S., Japan, South Korea, and China were sparring with a man who was excited about the prospect of firing missiles. And just think, when that happens, oh, everybody's going to want to be the U.S.'s best friend, right? Uh, because they may not be able to defend themselves as much as the U.S. Maybe you should just turn over your government uh, to them, to the empire, uh, like, you know, South Korea or whatnot. But it's business as usual. Investors and South Korean tech suppliers brush off the North Korea threat from April 28th, 2017. So there's always big money in actual war, but there's even more money in just the rumors of war. China deploys fighter jets in drills near North Korea. Then you have a Chinese-built amphibious aircraft taking its first flight. China launching its first domestically-built aircraft carrier, so its own aircraft carrier. There you go. So it says something about um, Beijing's uh, Beijing being or China being assertive in the South China Sea. So you could imagine that uh, one country, a little country called Japan, is not going to be happy about that. So it's no surprise to have uh, Japan's leader Abe wanting Vladimir Putin on side in North Korean standoff. He says, I want to have a candid discussion with President Putin on the imminent situations in North Korea, but also Syria and other areas. He says, I hope our two nations will cooperate to tackle these issues. Despite being a committed U.S. ally, uh, Japan holds regular meetings with Putin, often over the ongoing dispute of the South China Sea and their islands. So there you go. And I saw this article from April 14th. This is right after the Syria attack. Yeah, you had Russia, Iran, and Syria uh, getting together and saying, you know, what the hell is going on here? Uh, the, this is really getting bad. We'd better start making sure we look out for each other and get each other's back. So they issued a strong warning to the U.S. Friday against launching new airstrikes on Syria. And they also called for an investigation into the chemical weapons attack. Uh, they won't do that either. They won't. They won't do that. Uh, because we'll find out that either didn't exist or it was just basically terrorists, and it might even be traced back to the United States. So it's not going to happen. Kind of also kind of funny that the United uh, United Nations and all them uh, didn't say anything about it. Uh, they just went out. The U.S. was able to go out and carry out attacks off, yeah, you know, a few days later, and uh, no one said anything about international law or anything. So they get a free pass because of the empire. I mean, if you're a sovereign nation. Um, who's being provoked, you don't even have the right to defend yourself. So we have Russian Prime Minister saying the U.S. is on the verge of a military clash with Russia after Trump broken by U.S. power machine. In other words, once Trump got duped into uh, carrying out these airstrikes against the sovereign nation of Syria and their military base who's fighting terrorists that is funded by the United States, um, that this was actually a stab at Russia. So this is confirming what I said in my last video. When they hit Syria, they're actually hitting Iran and Russia, which is why they're all now getting together saying, oh shit. That's funny, he said, in just two and a half months, he's been broken by the U.S. power machine or the military-industrial complex. Russia sends troops to North Korea border as tensions escalate, although I'm not sure if that's true. They said the same thing about the aircraft carrier from the U.S. going towards North Korea, but it's actually going, coming back from a routine, um, a routine deployment. So a lot of BS propaganda going on here. Nothing like a nice Viagra commercial, right? to interrupt me while I was talking. Vice President Pence declares an end to strategic patience on North Korea. He goes on and on. We want to see the uh, North Korea to abandon its reckless path of develop of nuclear weapons. Never mind Israel, the United States, or anything like that. Uh, it's just so ridiculously obvious here. Uh, anyone like Saddam Hussein, again, U.S. gave him all the weapons, but when they wanted him done and over with to take him out, they had to make sure that those weapons were gone, which they were. Made fabricated false evidence. We went in, we took him out, we killed him. Same with Gaddafi, gave up his weapons. They actually did the same thing with Syria, um, all of those weapons. Again, the U.S. actually did sell tanks and, and various other military things to uh, Syria. But um, they want him gone, so they had him disarm those chemical weapons, which he did, which makes him open and vulnerable to attack. And I'm sure North Korea understands that as well, which is why they're not going to give him up. Easily. Neocom Lindsey Graham says the U.S. will stop the nut jobs. We've heard that before, the nut jobs, right? Propaganda like this, getting people ready, planting those seeds. North Korea's growing nuclear threat in one statistic. 
don't run and get inside. The public needs to know how to respond to nuclear attacks as experts. So be in fear. Live in fear, guys. No, don't do that. We're just going to live our lives. That's the best that we can do. Thank you.